Hi everyone. Hi. My name is Dr. Brian Watermeyer. I'm a lecturer in the Division of Disability Studies at the University of Cape Town. Um, I'm also a clinical psychologist by training and I'm also a visually impaired person, severely visually impaired. Uh, and it's partly because of that that I have a strong interest in uh, education for learners with disabilities, children and young people with disabilities. In this particular video today, what I'm going to be talking about is or are a couple of important and influential ways of, of thinking about disability, ways in which we understand what disability is and what it does. First, I'm going to begin with what's been called <clears throat> the medical model of disability, which is a way of thinking about disability which in fact summarizes the beliefs about disability which most of us hold. Secondly, I'm going to be talking about something called the social model of disability, which is a sort of a response to the medical model way of thinking, um, which is a far more critical view uh, of disability, which asks questions about whether disability is in fact a story of social injustice, uh, <clears throat> whether it's to do with discrimination and systemic exclusion in society rather than to do with the way that bodies, our bodies as disabled people, people with disabilities, uh, the way in which our bodies sort of work or don't work. I'm going to start with the, the so-called medical model of disability. <clears throat> and the story of the medical model um, goes something like as follows. Um, over the course of the 20th century, uh, that is the last century, for all sorts of historical reasons, which I won't go into the details of, people with disabilities around the world tended to become the responsibility of health professionals. In other words, it was ministries of health in governments, health professionals and health institutions, which, are, which came to be seen as the people and organizations which were responsible for taking care, if you like, uh, or managing the needs of people with disabilities driven primarily by health professionals. So if we think about health professionals, about doctors in particular perhaps, and think about what we train them to do, doctors primarily are, are trained to find out what's wrong with our bodies and to cure that particular thing. So cure is important in the role of the doctor, in what we require of doctors when we train them. The position of disability or the situation of disability is one which presents doctors with a situation which is incurable. And that can present a kind of awkwardness in relationship to medicine. So that's the first point. Second point about the relationship with doctors is that when we train doctors, we don't train them to think about how societies work and how systems of social inequality work. In other words, how it is that people in society have unequal positions to others and how those positions are maintained. Again, we train them to look at the body, find out what's wrong with it, and to cure it. In other words, <clears throat> what this meant was that doctors, health professionals, and medical institutions tended to begin to see disability as a bodily problem uh, rather than a social problem, which required a medical solution. We might say this is an individualizing model of disability. In other words, it takes the complicated social reality of inequality, which is what disability is about, and reduces it to an individual issue where it's as though the problem, if you like, of disability um, is located in the, in the individual, in what we might call bodies that are damaged or broken or defective. It takes away the context, uh, this medical way of thinking, pretending that no matter what uh, society one lived in and no matter what the responses of that society were to one's bodily difference that the implications and one's experience of disadvantage would be the same. And what this does uh, is it ignores the fact that around the world uh, people with disabilities uh, in all societies to a greater or lesser extent um, suffer systemic exclusion, discrimination and oppression of many, many sorts. The, the medical model is uh, misunderstood in, in a lot of ways. <clears throat> um, in particular, sometimes the medical model is understood as something which 
is practiced by all health professionals or believed in, if you like, by all health professionals. And, uh, and this is not true. Um, it's not true at all that all health professionals hold the medical model stance. The medical model view is a way which some of them may sort of do medicine, do their work, but other health practitioners would oppose that way of thinking very strongly. But more importantly than that is that the medical model view is not restricted to health professionals, but is in fact the most commonly held understanding of disability that we have uh, in society, in most societies, uh, and is in fact the way of understanding disability which we all grew up with. It, ref it reflects our common assumptions um, about disability, the idea that disability is a problem of the body and that problem of the body causes an inability to participate. It tends to make us see the nature of the body, not social organization, not the way our societies are structured, as the reason for the dreadful disadvantage that most people with disabilities experience around the world. And let's think about that for a moment. Around the world, people with disabilities are reliably to be found in a very marginal situation uh, in society. People with disabilities have extraordinarily high rates of unemployment. They tend to have very low levels of education, have very unequal access to, to key services such as health, accommodation and transportation, and tend to suffer high rates of exclusion from participation in uh, the life of the community. The list of these sorts of exclusions goes on. A medical model view would describe these, would understand these as being the result of the body. So how do we respond to that? And how did the disability movement respond? Well, they came up with something called the social model of disability. And this happened in the 1970s in the United Kingdom, where a group of academics themselves with disabilities um, became tired of their situations and their lives being understand, understood as something to do with what they regarded as their, or what they described, perhaps ironically, as their personal flaws. So they came up with this new critical way of thinking about disability. They said that the medical model disguises our disadvantage the disadvantage we suffer as, as a result of discrimination, it disguises that as the sort of natural order of things, as to do with our bodies and something which is unchangeable. They created the social model as a specifically deliberately oppositional view to the medical model. They said the medical model is a personal tragedy theory. It takes complicated processes of social oppression and reduces them to a personal tragedy, as something which just happens to happen to an individual and there's nothing we can do about it, um, but it's a personal tragedy, that individualizing way of thinking about disability. At the center of their social model was the distinction between how they defined disability and impairment. Firstly, they said from now on, when we say impairment, we'll, that will refer to dysfunction or difference in the anatomy or functioning of the body. In other words, the sort of medical diagnoses that people with disabilities uh, receive. They regarded that as impairment. Disability, they said, is the loss or limitation of opportunities that prevent people who have impairments from taking part in the normal life of the community on an equal level with others due to physical and social barriers. They sort of turned the disability debate on its head, turning our attention away from the body uh, as a way of explaining the social disadvantage people with disabilities experience and turning our attention to environments, to technologies, to services and procedures. This also led to the growth of resistance. Um, and the social model around the world <clears throat> was the spearhead of the international disability movement which began to come to the fore uh, in the 70s and 80s, 1970s and 80s. We were moving from a medical model, a medical way of thinking about disability, to seeing disability as a human rights and social justice issue, uh, which it is. It's up to all of us now, as we begin to use the social model and think in that way, to examine our own society, see the ways in which we exclude and marginalize people with disabilities through the ways in which our societies are designed and run, 
and to fight that as much as we can.